Hello everyone, today's lore episode is about the Halo. The best bounty hunters were always very practical. Luxury wasn't something they tended to seek out, and for a female Zabrak named Sugi, who operated during the Clone Wars, that tendency was ever present in her personal starship, the Halo. Now, if Sugi had any fault, it was probably that she was too principled and meant that she didn't always take the most lucrative jobs as they were regularly the most dishonest and unpleasant. And when she made a deal, she stuck to it regardless. And again, this meant that she occasionally missed out on some very profitable offers. But still, like many other hunters, she poured a lot of her profits into her equipment, particularly her ship. As Sugi regularly traveled with the diminutive Serapus, a small little creature who drove a hulking mechanical suit in combat and who occasionally with other bounty hunters was hired for particular jobs. Now, unlike others in her trade, Sugi didn't use her ship as a home from home. The Halo was strictly for transport and combat. On long trips, everyone, crew, crew and passengers, used the little fresher station and slept where they could in the cramped bunks in the crew cabin on the deck in the hold, the seats on the main flight deck, or even in the dorsal or forward gun turrets. Comfort was not what the Halo was for. Now, though her ship was heavily armed, Sugi was not inclined to take it into combat until absolutely necessary. Like, for example, when hired by farmers in Felucia to fight off pirate captain Hondo Anaka and his gang, Sugi could have easily used the Halo to blast Hondo's tank in the swoops his men piloted. But, however, this would probably have led Hondo to use his own starship, and a solid shot from that, or a lucky blast from the tank, and Sugi and her companions could have been stranded on the jungle world. Now when Sugi was hired to take a Wookiee assault team to rescue one of their own and some Jedi younglings from a Trandoshan hunting lodge over Waska, Sugi was content to let the Wookiees drop from the ship on ropes and engage the Trandoshans in close combat. After all, there was no sense in risking her ship when all she'd been asked to do was carry passengers. Now with its Tuka doll and nice plane with your nose markings, as well as its oversized, overpowered sublight engines, the Halo was easily recognizable from the land, from as far away from the landing platforms of the Jedi Temple or on Coruscant to the docking bays of Mos Eisley and Tatooine. The gunship was, like its owner and pilot, a real survivor, and Sugi and the Halo might not have been in the same league as Cad Bane, but that didn't mean they were an easy mark. Now, before Sugi got her hands on the ha on um, the ship and named it the Halo, it was a S-54 assault ship built by Protegef, the Protegef Shipyards. And this assault ship actually quickly became infam infamous for a clerical error in the classification registry documentation that saw the vessels classified as light freighters. Now, very few light freighters came with the kind of factory standard weapons seen on the S-54 SS-54s, but these gunships were designed for civilian law enforcement and local system military use. The rather suspicious error actually saw the entire first run of the craft snapped up by independent private sector purchases. Even after the fines imposed by the Republic, which were challenged in court and as a result successfully postponed for many years, the manufacturer made a significant profit. Now, intended for planetary security forces, the SS-54 assault ship was meant to shuttle troops or special law enforcement teams quickly around the planet or local system from a ground base or a carrier vessel. The standard short-range craft was fitted only with sublight engines mounted on wing struts extended out from the top mid-hull. Independent generators for each engine were mounted on the hull on each side at the base of the struts. Fuel tanks and power cells were set inside the um, said wing struts. Now, the engines were on 120 degree rotational ball joints. Now, in atmosphere, these actually gave the gunship exceptional maneuverability. And helping this was the oversized landing gear designed to cushion the shock of a hard and fast landing for a combat deployment. And the SS 54s mounted light laser cannon and blaster cannon as standard. Two double chin mounted lasers up front and a dual blaster cannon on the dorsal surface to the rear, uh, up top at the back. Now, as there was a significant blind spot to the rear at ground level, security forces tended to deploy the gunship in pairs, each covering the other on landing, if serious trouble was anticipated. Now, Sugi herself actually made significant modifications to the Halo to turn it into the ship she needed. 
The weapons were boosted beyond their original specs with additional power converters, capacitors and heat sinks, though they looked from the outside much like they had when they left the factory. Now, a larger main reactor and additional fuel cells were installed in the upper main hull and extending through the mid and rear projecting hull. Shields and a class 2 um, hyperdrive further filled the available space, making for a cramped crawl to the dorsal gun turret. Now, the sensor and communication systems received a modest, up modest upgrade as the life support and a small fresher station and rather cramped crew bunks were slotted into the space above and to the side of the landing gear compartment aft of the troop hull. Now the most significant addition to the Halo were the oversized sublight engines. They gave the Halo speeds equivalent to all but the very best starfighters and were baff baffled to allow for a remarkably silent approach, which was great for sneaking up on Trandoshan slavers. And that is Sugi's personal starship, the Halo. So if you like, if you like the video, be sure to hit the like button. Um, subscribe to keep up to date with all my videos and to help support the channel. And leave a, um, let me know what you thought in the, of the video down in the comments section below. And I'll talk to you all in the next one. Later.